And now it's time for Victoria's Gluten-Free GastroGab, the information source for your gluten-free lifestyle. Today, Victoria talks with Rebecca Berry from Hot Schedules Forth about the challenges of living gluten-free and working in the restaurant industry. And now here's your host, Victoria Wolf. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Our guest today is Rebecca Berry with Hot Schedules powered by Forth and she's been gluten-free for 16 years. You've got me beat. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much, Victoria. I'm really excited to be here and thank you so much for having me in your lovely home with Rich. Oh, you're and very welcome. your lovely rescue dog as well. Yeah, Sherman. So. Yeah, we gotta give a shout out to Sherman. <laughs> shout out to Sherman. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the beer that we're gonna be drinking throughout this wonderful conversation. Um, Holla Daily is one of our partners and they came out with a new beer that they, um, I think they debuted at the GABF and they won gold. And it's the Boombastic, um, Boombastic, look up terrible. Boombastic Hazy IPA, sorry about that. And so we are gonna try this and then we're gonna pair it with the pizza later. Well, cheers. cheers. I'm excited to try it for the first time. Mm, really cool. is really good. And from what I'm told, cause I'm not a beer person, um, an IPA is very hoppy. And um, if I had to give my opinion about this, I would say if um, I say if a papaya and a pineapple had a baby, then it would it would definitely taste be this. like this. It's got that nice fruity <laughs> tang to it. Very, yes, that's very a delicious. very good descriptive yeah. word. Fruity tang, <laughs> very very good. So I can see why it won. And pairs very well with pizza, I'm assuming too. Yeah, we'll see if it pairs with your pizza. Which you know, why don't we? We've brought it up. Let's talk about. I asked you what awesome. your favorite food was, and you said Chinese food. Okay. Um, I've been gluten free for roughly 16 years, and one of the things I missed the absolute most was Chinese food, bagels. I think I threw you a few other things that I absolutely love, but definitely Chinese food the most. So. And you had mentioned beef and broccoli. And when yes. I did eat Chinese food, and even when I was gluten-free, I used to go to P.F. Chang's a lot because mm -hmm. in the early days, they were one of the few restaurants that had a, a, a decent yeah. gluten-free men menu. And I could go there. I went there for a little while. It was the funniest thing, maybe six months, eight months. And then after that, every time I went, I had this pain right here. And I would call it the PF Chang pang, pang or pain. <laughs> every time I ate there, I had this pain in my whatever is here on this side. It's not stomach. I don't know what it was. It was just weird. Yeah. And so I stopped going there. But what I always got there was the beef and broccoli. It was my absolute favorite. So we've made beef and broccoli pizza I am today. So excited. And a little history, actually, ironically, that you bring up PF Chang. So they've definitely improved on their gluten free menu. But um, hot schedules actually stems from there. So David oh, Cantu, our really? founder, um, it was a, a, sorry, David, if I mess this up a little bit, but I believe it was a college project and figuring out how to schedule employees properly and swapping shifts and all that time spent. And so he was with PF Chang's. They have been one of our longest standing customers. So he, he started or was with PF Chang's and started hot schedules based on his yep. own need in the restaurant. Yep. Oh, that's so Investors cool. I had no family idea. family and friends. And oh, my goodness. And here we are celebrating 20 years later with our current merger with Forth. So oh, my goodness. I had exciting. no idea. See? Yeah. And you didn't even know I was going to bring up PF <laughs> I know. It's uh, I never was a big... I grew up with a very strange food situation. So Chinese food, to me, had... Um, the only thing I knew about Chinese food until I was an adult was that it came from La Choy in a can, and you put it on these crunchy noodles. And I got to eat it... Um, the people who raised me, I had a brother too, and um, he didn't like Chinese food. Well, that was, I, I learned, later learned that is so far removed from Chinese right. food. But that was my perspective. <laughs> so he liked chili from a can, of course, because in the 70s you ate everything from a can. And so he would have his chili on elbow macaroni, which I learned later how weird that was in yes. itself. <laughs> and then I would have my, you know, we would have me and my, the woman who raised me would have um, the, the choy on our, our yep. noodles. And that was like our big, it was the only time we were allowed to eat different things. Otherwise it's, I made it, you eat it. I don't care if you like it or not. They had that kind of childhood. So Chinese food for me was never something I really gravitated to but as I've you know gone through adulthood I have eaten more and more of it but it's never one of my strong suits especially on the cooking side rich is much better with Asian flavors and cooks a lot more but this is my second Asian that I've done the first one I did was for, for very first podcast for Karen at Holla Daily and I did a, a, a shrimp pad thai pizza and I, I never even that. eaten shrimp pad thai <laughs> or any pad thai so I was so excited because I am I'm expanding my my knowledge um, of Asian cooking and I um, I actually nailed this and I was very proud of myself so you're, you're gonna love I'm it. Really, We're gonna get to really that a little bit later. So. I'm really excited. So 16 years ago would have been 2003. Oh, the year my son was born. You went, 
yeah. gluten-free. So I can say in 2007, there was next to nothing, but in 2003, there was literally there was nothing to nothing. eat, right? So what did nothing. you, what, um, well, how did, why did you go gluten-free yeah. and how did you eat? You what know, did you eat? That's a great question. I still to this day wonder, and I think that's why I love to cook so much which has kind of driven me to the industry and meeting you all. Um, but I was actually a hairdresser back then. You and were? I was. And so I thought- Hence was, the beautiful ombre well, hair you. you have a now. A shout out to Nicole, who does my hair with Lux. Um, but, oh. So back then um, I was doing hair and I thought it was a chemical reaction. Oh. I woke up one morning and I was covered in hives and I just from there stemmed many years of not being able to figure out what was wrong and how I felt. and. Um, I went to National Jewish for testing, the whole nine yards. Well, celiacs was very unknown at that point. And I eventually was tested there and came out positive for that. They sent me to a nutritionist who had no clue what celiacs was or gluten-free or intolerances. So essentially, Victoria, I had to do the research by myself. So oh I didn't have any resources. I didn't know that even crab sushi rolls were actually wheat gluten with fake crab white fish. Yeah, yeah. Fake, fake crab so not anymore they're not by the way they're not yes, I do, thank and goodness. i did buy some of that at one point so uh, we have a whole ton of it from a trade show so if you'd like to take some home it's in the freezer what do we have awesome. like 10 packages yeah <laughs> so you know it just really stemmed from there but i just couldn't figure it out i was still really really sick and eventually i scaled back from doing hair and did a few other retail jobs and um went back into a clinical beauty industry of selling cosmetics, got kind of burnt out, ended up in the restaurant industry. So I was educated a little bit more on food ingredients and quality, and but through that, it was just really trial and error. I remember having rice bread was the only option, oh. dry. Um, thank goodness at the time for Udi's. You know, was, yeah, when they came like, along, they, they came really out, revolutionary they compared were the to what only was out thing there. We had. Yep, yep. And you know, so I started really just hammering into my cooking skills and figuring it out, but I still couldn't quite get better. And at that point, I had a girlfriend who was a nutritionist and a chiropractor, Dr. Walker, and she said, I think you're allergic to dairy. And I went, no, there's no way, because cheese is all I have left. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and she ended up having me get a blood test, and sure enough, that came through. And as soon as I eliminated both items, it was like night and day within a few weeks. So it's been a journey. It's an ongoing journey. Um, I think as food develops and we have a little bit more insight into what we're eating, it's been a lot easier for us to be able to go out to eat and mm -hmm. go to the grocery store even and pick up something quick versus what it was 16 years ago. Right, and not have to read. I remember when I first went gluten-free in 07, every single label had to be read every because there was gluten everywhere. Now, 12 years later, I still look at the label if, if I, and, and at least we have the allergens listed, mm -hmm. but sometimes that's deceptive. I generally don't buy anything unless it says it's gluten-free on it. I right. just, you know, I just like, you know, th that could be wrong on some level, but because there are labeling laws, you know, if you're going to put the gluten-free on there, you're going to, you're going to take the risk and put yourself out there. Yeah. You're usually not going to do a terrible job, but that in saying that we've had Vans and Purdue and other companies that are gluten free, certified gluten free. Oh, Purdue, that, I love their chicken. But so they've good. had recalls with, you know, un, unclaimed gluten. Yeah. And so it's like, does that, this is a show in itself, does that certification even matter? And as a manufacturer, yeah. you know, I, we don't have that official certification just yet, but I can tell you that we have a completely 100% dedicated gluten-free facility. And so that, to me, that's more important. And most consumers believe that too. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I love that. I don't have to read. I just look for the gluten-free now. Right. It was, I, I remember the early days, I'd spend an hour in the grocery store just reading everything as I'm Every getting used aisle. to. Does it have barley yes. in it? Does it have malt liquor? And does, you know, all these things and the, the whole soy sauce, you know, what has soy sauce in it? And, um, yeah, and back then there wasn't a lot of information either. I got a lot on the internet, but I did a ton of my own research. Yeah. And I think it's been in the last, I'd say five to six years that it's really prolifer proliferated all the information out there. And now you could almost argue there's too much information and too much opinion. Right. <laughs> and you still should do your own research, I think, because you need to have that knowledge base rather than relying on somebody else to just tell you what to do. Because, you know, it's your life and yeah. you, you got to keep yourself safe. And I had a very similar experience with the dairy 
And um, I hear that, and, and this is not the case, but everybody, once you're diagnosed with celiac and your intestines and your villi actually start to heal, you can, you can um, sometimes not have the issue with dairy as much. But it sounds like you and I both were kind I of do. backwards. Yeah. I, had all, I had all the healing after getting rid of gluten, and then the dairy creeped up. I'm like, wait, I'm starting to feel bad. And it's a totally different feeling than if I get glutened or I eat dairy, it's, it's different reaction in my it's body. I can tell the difference. And um, so it, that was tough because I was just like you. What do I, I got cheese. That's, what I do know. I have left, you know? <laughs> but it was, um, that was a bit of a hard transition, but it also made me a better cook. And I got totally into making all these things dairy free. Um, which I've gotten pretty good at. And luckily for me, and I don't know, can you do, you can do goat and sheep, right? I can right? do goat and sheep. And so and can I. Dr. Walker actually was, like, she pushed me for many years to try it. And I was so scared because I was so sick from the food that I didn't. Right. I didn't. And finally one day I went, okay, and now, oh my gosh, I just, it, I'll go to a restaurant and say, I don't care how much extra it is. Please, yeah, goat I cheese just, versus no goat cow. cheese. No cow. That's how it, that's no the moo. same thing. It's like, I, can, I can't do the cow, but I can do the sheep and the goat. Right. What do you got? Yeah. And right. they, I love that servers understand that. Um, that that's always a point of contention with, with, with um, people with celiac and gluten-free. It's like, does my server understand? And yes, there have been a lot of instances where your server just looks at you like you're the biggest pain in the ass that walked in the door. Or the I don't know, and I don't know will yeah. kill me. Yeah, so. I don't know, you know, I can check, but that means yeah. I have to walk over there twice or something. Um, I have to tell a story because I tell as much as I can tell it because it's one of the most amazing things that ever happened. Have you been to Barcelona? I have not. Okay. We went to Barcelona about two months ago. So I get the menu and we have this great server and I tell her I'm gluten and dairy free. What can I eat? She takes the menu out of my hand. She walks back to the kitchen, which is an open kitchen. So we saw that. It took her about five, seven minutes. Fine. She comes back. The entire menu is marked up I with what I can or what I can eat. I'm like, that was the that was literally the greatest experience I think I've ever had in a restaurant. And um, I'm just so thrilled about it. So go, go to no, Barcelona. I love it. You know, I actually did, I was able to do a pop-up um, with Noma in Tulum. And I mean, that is a hefty price for that dinner. And it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and experience. And I tell you what, they were amazing. They catered to every single, single allergy I had. If beer was being paired, they brought out another type of cocktail. So I ate all wow. 14 courses without any issue. Oh, that's amazing. And I find with fine it's dining, incredible. it's so much easier. And, and that's and it's when, when Eric Chiapetta was on the last show, he, he touched on this. It's like a real chef, and I hate to say real, but a chef that, that is, is, is cooking for the reasons that you want a chef to cook right. for, it takes it as a challenge and wants to make you happy because it is a hospitality industry. They and it. And, and they, they don't want, I mean, they don't want one person at the table just be sitting there watching everybody eat, which I don't know how many times I've done that in my life. I'm sure oh, yeah. you Weddings, have too. Um, you name it. A Networking of... events. Yes. I mean, I just, I've watched so, so much good food being eaten that I didn't get to partake in. It and especially sad. when you're hangry, that is the oh. worst. Oh, it is the worst. <laughs> I, it is. It's, it's so unfair. And I feel, I, there's many times I've sat in a restaurant and I felt like a little five-year-old child ready to have a temper tantrum because I couldn't get what I wanted. Or it comes out wrong or... Oh, you that's know, the worst. It's like, we can remake it. And, and at that point, I'm like, no, fuck, no, I just don't want to, <laughs> I'll just go eat somewhere. I mean, it's like, I feel like a yeah. child when, when that happens because you get so excited because you don't have a lot of choices when you go out to eat and you want, you know, you don't go out to eat a lot, go out to eat a lot. And it's like, you want it to be perfect. And then something goes wrong. And then you're like, fine, I'll just leave. Well, and I think it's our <laughs> due diligence too. You know, I've, I've been in the industry for roughly eight years and I started by, Sling and frying oil with restaurant technologies where I worked with restaurants on their oil quality, um, oil life, but also um, quality and compliance with gluten-free fryers, with fish fryers, however it may go. So I feel like I'm fortunate enough that I have an understanding of how to speak to a server when they come in and go, well, the fries aren't gluten-free. I know it's because is, a lot is of it because in the they're not? In the, zone. Yeah. Is it or not in a fryer, it, right. dedicated fryer? But I think it's our due diligence, you know, as consumers too, to have a little bit of patience and awareness on how we're asking for things to be prepped. Because for us, it's not a choice; it's a must-have. Right. And you know, I think also on the restaurant side, training your employees to be kind in how they approach it and ask and think versus the, well, we can't do that, or is this a choice? You know, yeah. and as Eric was speaking to last week, there are people who get on a hype about certain things, and that's challenging for us. So I feel that I've had more meals come out correctly by 
really specifying and saying, you know, I understand that the contamination in the fryer or on the griddle or whatever it may be, you know, that's a risk I have to take. Yeah, and I'm either going to take it or I'm not. Right. And, and yeah, we're, I, you, you got to roll the dice a little bit if yeah. you want to go out to eat almost anywhere. I yeah. mean, there's very few dedicated gluten-free restaurants, and those are wonderful, that, the ones that do exist. And I don't get, I mean, there's sometimes I, I will have a reaction, and most of the time I don't. And I go to, I don't go to chain restaurants as much as I did way yeah. in another life because I, I don't know. I, I, they may have, they may have been the first that had the good gluten-free menus that actually had a gluten-free menu, but I don't think they're the best place to eat in general. And <laughs> well, we're a little spoiled too in Colorado. I mean, we're I mean, such a eat local, shop local, and your brand is one that is local. That is in a lot of our local establishments, mm -hmm. whether it's retail with our grocery stores. I, Natural Grocers is right down the street from me. I always have your um, your pizza shells in my freezer, especially the snowstorm where we got stuck in, and I sent you yep, a picture of yep. that awesome pic, uh, pizza. Always good to have pizza in a snowstorm. You have to. Definitely. But being able to have that, or even, um, you know, a girlfriend of mine, as I'd mentioned, who works at Perry, said, oh yes, we love that crust. Victoria's crust is here. You know, it's really exciting to be able to go out and eat and enjoy it locally or in regional chains. But I think just with having options like fun pizza to make and things that we do here the chains are important and they serve their purpose but for people Not like for you us. and i <laughs> who really want who are foodies who want to have that right. good good quality food it's it's better to go local and the chefs are generally more aware um i just went to postino which is oh i saw that i said you know they have our our bun for they make um, paninis did you have that amazing amazing i think i had the two do we have the tuna when we were there oh my god it was so good and those guys did a knockout job everything they do wonderful. came and i have never had such good food quality and service on a new opening like that with gluten yeah you options. went to the broadway the new broadway yep, yep. it's South South dangerous broadway. it's walking distance from my house so. oh, they're opening another one up at eighth in colorado which is closer to us right. so we're super excited because i love postino and um, it's not that the Highlands is far, but on any given day in Denver, it could take 45 minutes oh, to yeah. get from here to the Highlands when it only should take 20 years ago, it took like 10 minutes, but um, so it'd be nice to have it at 8th in Colorado. So, yeah. So, I mean, just having those options that you speak to, you know, and I, it, I'll, I'll never forget meeting you guys. We were at Ignite um, mm -hmm. yep. for an event. I can't remember what it was. That was Twan's event, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, yes. And the quality of your crust and the food was so amazing. And that's kind of how our friendships started. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, grew together and it's just it's incredible to be able to have really yummy options no oh, well, thank you that's why we do me. what we do we feel um it's 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 a mission it's kind of a calling a mission mm -hmm. and it's i don't want anybody to lead a, a less than food life because yes. there's not enough options i because I, I made did that for we both did that for yeah. for far too long and um it shouldn't be that way it's just you got to get creative and and figure it out and it's Pizza's not easy. Pizza's probably, we, we took on the hardest thing we could take on. Well, pizza and sandwich bread, I think are the two hardest yeah. things to make gluten-free and make them well. And of course we're like, oh yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> so at least, you know, at least we did it the hard, we feel very, very fortunate that we figured it out. Well, I still don't know how we figured it out. And a did. good tip for the at home, people who are making your crust at home is cook it in a skillet too. If you're using a white sauce. Oh, that's a really um, good it idea. It tends to crisp up. I put it in the mm -hmm. oven that way and then kind of finish it on the stove so it's nice and crispy but still soft and fluffy or a pizza so, stone too but so many yes. people would be scared to do it on a skillet but i've had customers tell me that they've done that and i've made a um french toast pizza with an apple compote okay now i'm just that way i <laughs> i literally dipped the entire crust in the french toast batter and cooked it up in a skillet and then topped it with i can't remember i think it was the apple compote and then something else and then put it in the oven to finish it off it's like okay well uh <laughs> i will be making that for bread this weekend so if you all want to come over to my it house was so good we had it, victorious it was for a courtyard party we had a couple years ago and i brought it out and everybody just loved it they did it was probably three years ago and um, they didn't know it was gluten-free which which made me very very happy um is it time to make pizza it's time. Rich says time Great. to make pizza. Okay, well, let's so make some pizza. We're going to talk about this beef and broccoli pizza. So because beef and broccoli, um, I have learned, is very complicated, somewhat complicated to make it right. Uh, we made it ahead of time. And what's great about this is you can make it for dinner and then save some leftovers and then you can make it for a pizza later in the week. So we had this for dinner on Monday and my near 16 year old son just completely loved it. Um, 
where's my pizza crust is the big question. That's the most <laughs> important part. It's coming. It's being delivered. Oh, I well, and I'm that. somebody who loves to eat my leftovers for breakfast. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that we right do there too. is... Okay, so I made this, uh, what I did, and this is a good tip for, for if you're wanting to adapt a recipe in any way, shape, or form. I went and I took two recipes. That I, actually, I looked at four different recipes. I've never made this before. And I looked at all the ingredients. They were quite varied. It was very interesting. And then I decided I had the two recipes next to me, and I picked and cho chose what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, unless you are a very confident cook, do not do that <laughs> in the beginning. Just go with my recipe that I'm going to post. Um, I made a couple errors. It's like, oh, that was supposed to go in the sauce, not the marinade, but it all worked out, which it usually does. So what I did is after I made this, I, served, I saved some of the sauce, and then I added some vegan, um, some tofu sour cream to cream it up and a little bit of um, nutritional yeast. So what we have is the sauce for the pizza is the actual sauce that we used um, for the beef and broccoli. And the beef and broccoli uses an oyster sauce, which Kiko Min's does make a gluten-free oyster sauce. Fantastic. And it's pretty easy nowadays to... Um, it has a little hoisin in it too, and it's easy to make uh, to find a gluten-free hoisin, um, and almost all those sauces you can find gluten-free. So I'm just going to do this. So I used a um, a flat iron steak and marinated it. The longer that you marinate, now see because these are leftovers, our broccoli is looking a little funky, but um, it's That's still going to okay. eat good. Yeah, it's going to in this better. yeah in this dish the broccoli not being bright green is an okay thing. Um, because who's going to make beef and broccoli just for a pizza? Really? Right. I mean, this is going to be a leftover dish no matter what, how you look at it. And so um, the longer you marinate your meat, because you're going to use something like a flank steak or a flat iron, which is going to be a tough cut of meat unless you marinate it. I marinated it, I think it was about four hours, and it was nice and tender and very flavorful. So I'm going to get as much because I like to load up the pizza. So obviously this is going to be a dairy-free pizza with no cheese on here. Um, and cheese would be weird with um, Asian, I Absolutely, think, anyways. Yeah. yeah. I think you could probably make it work. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to cook this up, get it in the oven, and then when we come back, we are going to top it with, I always put stuff on afterwards, so you know that's coming. <laughs> so then we're going to top it, and we're going to eat it. And so come on back. Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastro Gab will return after a word from our sponsors and partners. Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab is brought to you by Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen, makers of award-winning pizza crust, breads, buns, ready-to-bake pizzas, and garlic breads, sold in retailers and served in fine restaurants all along the Front Range. Visit our website at victoriasglutenfreekitchen.com to find a retailer or restaurant partner near you or to order our products online. Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen, free of gluten, intolerant of average. Nothing goes better with pizza than beer, and Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab proudly serves beers provided by Colorado's only dedicated gluten-free brewer, Holidayly Brewing. Visit their tap house in Golden, or find a retailer or restaurant near you by visiting their website, holidaylybrewing.com. The right knife does make a difference. All demonstrations and product preparation for Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab is done with knives provided by Element Knife Company. Find the right knife for you by visiting elementknife.com. And now let's return for more of Victoria's Gluten-Free Gastrogab. Welcome back. While you were gone, we had an incident. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's like, I can't do oysters. There's oyster sauce in the beef and broccoli. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how that happened. So... We're going to finish off the, the uh, beef and broccoli pizza. I'm going to eat it. Rich is going to eat it. Rebecca's going nowhere near it. And so during the break, we, we whipped up this Italian sandwich pizza, which will be coming out soon, and we're going to get that ready for her. So we're going to finish off this pizza because we like to put components on after we bake. Um, we really need some color here, and we're going to add some green onions. So I'm going to use my amazing knife from Element Knife Company to cut some green onions. Um, I want them to be very, very small and fine. So I'm going to take this green onion and I'm going to slice it lengthwise. And then I'm going to dice it or chop it. I don't know, Elon would probably call it a slice, dice, or chop. I don't know. He'd say whatever it is as long as it's cut well. And those are the best knives in the industry. The, oh, they, they are so, so good. Okay, so now we're going to do this part. It's a little scary, but if you just use the tip of the knife, once you get more comfortable with knives, it's no big deal. There we've cut it in half. And then I'm just going to chop it a little more, more. 
and we are almost done. I'm going to put some green, more green onion on here. And then we're also going to top, we had deep fried some shallots. We've, um, we drizzled them a little bit with um, uh, rice flour and then threw them into some hot oil to give us a little bit of a crunch and a different flavor um, addition. So we've got two types of onions on the top. And then, of course, because it's sesame seeds, we love sesame seeds. So we're going to put some sesame seeds on there, too. So now it's time to cut this pizza. I'm using the big, big knife here instead of a pizza cutter. And I'm going to cut it in eighths. And soon, Rebecca's Italian pizza is going to ding and be ready. And then we're going to finish that one up. That means I get to eat two types of pizza. Unfortunately, you only get to eat one, Rebecca. Okay. But you know, I'm that one's going to be amazing. Rich, here is your slice of pizza. Thank you. I'm going to get mine. Okay, so Rebecca's pizza is about to come out here, and because Rebecca is allergic, it's an allergy, correct? It to, is, yeah. To most shellfish, we do not want to cut her pizza with the same knife or on the same cutting board. So we're going to take some precautions so that we don't get her sick. And so if you have, whoa, we got a lot of oil on this. If you have somebody coming to your house to eat that has a shellfish allergy, you're going to want to, or any allergy for that matter, you're going to want to be as careful as you can. Um, separate cutting boards, separate knives, just about um, anything. It, it doesn't want to, you don't want it to come into contact with anything that um, could make your uh, guests sick. Now, this is our Italian sandwich pizza. It's got three meats, pepperoni, ham, and a hard salami. It's got some mild jardinere, some red onions, and I made a sauce out of mayonnaise and an Italian dressing, a boar's head Italian dressing. Now, there's a lot of oil in that, so you can see that here on the pizza. We're just going to let it seep. <coughs> excuse me, let it um, absorb back into the pizza. So because Rebecca can do some sheep cheese like I can, we're going to put a little bit of the grated um, Pecorino Romano, which is made from sheep, on top. And then we're going to use a pizza cutter to cut it because I use the other knife for the other pizza. And Victoria, for those who don't have kind of commercial grade or pizza operation that you've got going on that's where the skillet with the oil comes in handy oh yeah what I've noticed is because it really just holds that oil back into that pizza so I've had a lot of success with doing that because I love to do that garlic white sauce with all of oh the yeah garlic and just all of the goodness with all of the peppers you're cooking in a cast iron a pizza in a cast iron is it's just a, a different it's way to cook it yeah <laughs> and it's it's a fun way to cook and it just gives you a little bit different result and um we love that our crust can, ha can hold up to, um, to such a cooking technique. I'm going to get a little knife here. A lot of crusts can't because that's just a little too much heat yeah. for them. Okay. When you don't have really ooey gooey cheese on the pizza, things move a little bit. So, but I think Thank I got you. it on there. There is your slice of pizza. Very excited. Rich, would you like a slice of this? Yes, please. Okay. I'm going to throw some more jardinere that fell off on here for you. I, this is why I don't like pizza cutters. They don't always cut all the way, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do in, in the moment. So here's your slice. I don't know if I'm more excited about this or the beef and broccoli. They both look pretty phenomenal. So. I think I'm excited about both. <laughs> okay, so we're done with pizzas. Excuse me, Sherman. I have to sit in my chair now. Sherman wants to be involved, but he's on the floor, so you really can't see him. Maybe we should get you a chair at the island. That would be cool. I'll be cooking with Sherman. Yeah. Let me grab some napkins, too. Great. Well, Sher Sherman is, um, all of our products are Sherman approved. Sherman, um, he has Sherman yes, approved. Yes, he has tried everything. There's this story um, back when, it took us two years uh, working on the sandwich bread recipe. And one day we had made, um, I think it was like four sandwich bread loaves at, home, at the kitchen. And it came home with them. And I can't remember why we brought them home. But they were sitting on, the, on here on the island on the booze board. And... I don't know. If, I don't know why. I still don't know why they were there. And we had to go somewhere. And you know, he just goes, runs around the house when we're not here. And when we get back, there's three loaves of bread on the booze board on the island. And I, I say to Rich, I'm like, there were four here, weren't there? <laughs> and he, and then I'm looking on the ground. I'm looking for crumbs. I had to look really, really carefully, but there was a few little crumbs just at enough. the baseboard there. He ate the entire loaf of bread, I and that's an not like him. Did that because it's he just does, so good. Well, he doesn't usually get up on the counter or anything, so it is. The bread is definitely Sherman approved. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm going to try the 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 Italian. I'll try it with you first. Mm. Well, there's a lot of oil mm -hmm. on here. There's 
This was just kind of whipped up. I think if I did it again, I would put a little bit less mayo because it's very oily, but it's, it's still amazing. I love the peppers. That saltiness and that. Oh, my just God. Just enough spice. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. And that crunch from the pizza crust. And then yeah, the pepperoni. On a, on, a on a pizza, it is. Mm -hmm. It's an Italian grinder. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Oh. Okay, I told you all I was going to have a spoiled day today. I'm very spoiled right now. Oh, my God. This is so mm. good. That is phenomenal. It is. I think a lot of people don't realize that pizza can be whatever they want it to be. Mm hmm and so we, we think, and that's what we do here at the show, whatever meal, whatever dish you like, you can turn it into a pizza. And this is another example how an Italian sandwich can be made into a pizza. Whether it's pad thai or anchovies, or, which are definitely not do you like alley. Do you like white anchovies? I don't, but oh. I did see Eric's. You, you might have. I, didn't, I wasn't a huge fan either, but I bet I really like them now. Okay, so this is pretty amazing. Mm. So in between bites, Rebecca, tell, tell us about your 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 job with with uh, hot schedules powered by Fourth, how it gets you in all these restaurants, and yeah. how that has been really good for your you know ability to 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 gain more knowledge about how how it's more easy more easy how to more easily eat out and be an Absolutely. advocate for yourself and maybe you know talk about whatever you want to talk about that we might want to know about what goes on in restaurants. Allergy can allergen control and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, very exciting. So fourth just partnered. Well, we merged with Hot Schedules, and I'll show my little disc here. <laughs> um, that's also serving as a coaster. So I was involved on the scheduling side, as I said before, for with David's brainchild and just getting um, employees able to better communicate and creates employee engagement. But with the merge of fourth and Hot Schedules, we now do end to end with everything from onboarding, recruiting, the payroll, you name it. Um, we do offer PEO services, which helps us with workers' comp, mm -hmm. all of that across the board. But the cool thing, too, that we do is we do menu housing, nutrition, publishing, those things that you and I have to go in and ask about. Mm -hmm. So for the employees there and the businesses that do work with us, they have the opportunity to actually empower their employees to be better to their customers by having that information at just the touch of a fingertip. Oh, so they don't have to go it. ask the chef, oh, does this contain, Right. so many times, does this contain dairy when I'm asking about like a potato salad or a coleslaw? Right. They're like, sometimes they, seem they to, put ranch yeah. in it, you don't know. Or sour cream. And sometimes when I ask that question, they're gone for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where they're going for their answers, but it's taking a while. But that would be great if they just, they, oh, I can just or check the computer. Or they can go to the chef if they need to, if they, the chef may be the only one with access to it or a manager where, they can pull up that ingredient mm -hmm. list. Um, so easily rather than going to find the container it came in or the ingredient exactly. list or something like that. And a, a restaurant that I frequent a lot, um, you know, they're not on our platform yet. They're just not as robust needing it, but they at least have all of the ingredients available where they can show me a list and I know what I can and can't eat there. Oh, that's and good. And that is that's so much good. easier, but the challenge has come obviously from when I entertain. I mean, that's what I do. I. I take my clients out to eat. I'm in restaurants. That's how I do my research. I find out, you know, who's the latest and greatest, who's coming into the space, what are we doing. And a lot of times, if I'm having an important meeting, I need to know ahead of time what that menu looks like. Because as you've w had the same experience, mm -hmm. it's very uncomfortable to be sitting <laughs> and asking all these questions. So I've had the challenge of having to call ahead if I know we're in for a big group. I have to find out what restaurant we're going to, if it's an event just so I can better understand. I'm very fortunate with fourth and hot schedules that our event planners make sure to ask that question. They even give us cards when we're there. If we can't find something to eat, they accommodate. But that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to weddings where I've done bring your own food if they're friends of mine. Yep. <laughs> I've kind of said, hey, sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's so, frustrating, but I'm, it's just our reality. It is. So having that platform and being able to see not just all of the analytics and everything that go along with it, which is critical to restaurants and staying open, but to be able to have return business and have customers like you and I be able to go in and know that it's safe to eat there and know right. that somebody will double check because sometimes it's too good to be true. Um, I've gone in where your pizza crust, for instance, if I didn't know it, I would go, there's no way this is Yeah, we get that a lot. We love that. that that's our barometer of success is how right. many people send back their pizza thinking it's not And I never free. send it back, but I double check. I go, yeah, I, I even do that. It's my own crust and I do yeah. that. It's crazy. So I would think that having all that allergen information 
you know, computerized there and, and easy access um, would be wonderful because sometimes there's gluten hidden that in ingredients that maybe right. even the chef doesn't know because he hasn't read the ingredient list. So I'm assuming that all the ingredients you're using in a dish, you're going to pull in, like let's say it's a, a mayonnaise, right. for example, it's going to pull in that ingredient list from the prepared mayonnaise. And a lot of times manufacturers can change their recipe and not Absolutely. let anybody know. So that sounds like a really good way for a restaurant to be on top of all of their allergen control, even when they're not paying that uh, close enough attention, which sometimes you can't. There's just too much going on. Well, in the and restaurant. that goes into their inventory too. So when they pull all of these ingredients, it factors into their inventory, which then factors into what they need to order to ensure that they're not overstocked, where you're going to have oh, waste, that's so nice. Or a shortage, but also everything is lined up on how much is in each thing. So let's say you're not somebody who's like us, and you're somebody who it's a preference, and you're just trying to avoid it. Where for instance, I like to use Eric just because he was the last show and he gave a lot of the chef side of things. You know, if he can have soy sauce and there's just a tablespoon in that in, in that mixture, but I can't, he mm -hmm. knows that he can go ahead and move forward and have that meal. Right. Versus you and I going, oh, no, no, no. We, yeah. We can't. Or can you replace the soy sauce with tamari right. if that's possible, which depending on the dish, whether it might, may, may or may not be. I can definitely see from the restaurant's perspective, too, and I'm sure it's a ton of work on the front end to put all those recipes in. But I mean, it's, it probably does costing too. You know exactly where we your do. margins we are. We help and do all of that. We help do all. We just need all of their information and we can upload it. It's really... I mean, obviously, there's work that goes in from yeah, the that's, MT side, yeah. but once we have that information, and then it can be modified on a platform versus handwriting out things or having to... You, you can know, print out the recipes for, for your kitchen you staff, can. and oh, or wow. Or even they can go in and look at an iPad, or there are certain things, there's certain equipment manufacturers that make it available to even upload that recipe into the equipment, which is really cool, because you hit <gasps> oh, a button and go... Wow. Okay, this is this, 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 and this oven. Um, I want to say a lot of the um, Blodgett has that technology. Oh, do they cool. really? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we're cooking scones. We just. This is what it is. This is what it what's came in, in from the this platform. Is how long it has to cook. Yeah, oh, so. it'll reset the temperature and the length of time you cook. And that doesn't and necessarily oh connect God. with our, our platform, but there's just so much technology. And Eventually, it will. It sounds it, like it it's will. going I to. Think, yeah, I'm hoping we get there. I mean, we're we're taking the market by storm right now with being the only end-to-end -end solution with workforce management involved in the restaurant and hospitality industry. So. There's just more visibility. It, it allows restaurant owners and operators and staff to really focus on what's important on growing the brand, on taking care of their employees, taking care of customers, on and focusing on the food and instead of not, just you know, the margin of the food. Right. <laughs> focusing on this needs to be cut separately. Right. Or exactly. Or on a different, you know, griddle, or we need to clean this down or have dedicated fryers. So. It, it's pretty cool. The technology that we're coming out with is just incredible. And it allows us to have awesome stuff yes, like it Victoria's does. Pizza. <laughs> yeah, I know. The restaurant business is, um, is a tough business, one of the toughest. And um, margins, would you like another piece? I would. Thank you. Okay, let me get it's some of this so jardiner here. Um, and the, the, the less you have to focus on the, those things, the, I think the better off you'll be. Let, let the mm -hmm. computer do that. Let that all get figured out. And give you a report because... You know, the food and the hospitality and the customers and employees, they definitely are more important. I know in our business, I mean, margins and ingredients yeah. and how much I need in inventory, that, that's, that's a lot of work. We literally say, and I will quote my boss on this, let us take care of it. We'll handle everything. We'll handle your workman's comp. We'll handle your state unemployment tax rates. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. We'll handle thing. everything and also help craft your handbooks and ensure that all of your employees are in compliance and, you know, I-9s, things like that, where when you're in a Those restaurant and you need important. an audit trail, mm -hmm. if you can just pull it from one space and there's no error because everything's done from the employee, they cannot move forward until each space is filled out. So from that recruiting to that onboarding to pay out to if an incident happens, we've got you covered. Well, that's wonderful, especially the I-9s. The I-9s, you have to have an audit trail. Oh, You've got to have terrifying. a picture of, of the documentation. Mm -hmm. It's got to be in there. And, you know, unless you get audited, it really, you know, or you, there's some sort of issue. But, yeah, I, I do all that stuff for the business. And there, there's a lot of moving parts there. Mm -hmm. I finally... Um, went to payroll it was about two years ago I went to a payroll company after doing about a year of doing my own taxes and all that and I'm like I will never ever I know. ever and do ACA that again and all of that it's too you know, difficult it's, once you reach that over 50 full-time employees and 
It's you bad when I only have five. It's right. bad enough. And <laughs> it's just the taxes are crazy. I mean, you've got the state taxes and, and the federal taxes. But yeah, payroll's a great thing. So it's wonderful that you have, the, really, the end to end, the end, to end is, because that's got to be tough. It's tough for any business, whether you're a restaurant or not. It's like, okay, I'm going to get my this, these services from this company and right. these services from this company. And then you've got maybe three or four companies involved. And, and they don't all talk to each other because they they're not the same company. And we're single sign-on, and we right. also pay vendors out. So the invoices get uploaded in the Oh, so you don't even have to pay the bills? So if you're buying Victoria's oh my goodness. gluten-free, then you know it, it all filters in. Your invoices go to that restaurant, and then it goes into our platform, and it's generated, wow. and you're paid out. And so it takes a lot of that just nitty-gritty work where we're paying these managers, owner-operators are taking their personal time to do payroll or to do these things. And allowing them, like I said, we've got you covered. We'll let you take care of the rest of your business and your growth and focus on food quality, on, on allergen control, the things that matter to keep people coming in and right. your doors open. That, that, that help your, I mean, yeah. the other thing, those, what you do is very, very important for the business, but all those other things are usually what gets overlooked because you're spending so much time on the things that exactly. really make your business work. So that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, so we're, we're excited to be in the market and be coming back full force. Um, you know, and allowing restaurants to focus on new and great products and just really have the engagement with their customers that they need to have. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And I, I wish you all the luck. You're going to go out there and get a ton of restaurants signed Thank on. Because if I was a restaurant owner, owner I'd, be, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I don't need to do all this stuff. <laughs> so because you've been in so many restaurants and you're continually in restaurants, do you have, for all of our Denver listeners yeah. or for anybody who's going to be coming to Denver, you know, on a trip, what would be your top five gluten-free, dairy-free, friendly restaurants, and it might be hard to narrow on, but just some of your favorites that you would So I do to. have to say my, my very favorite restaurant in Denver is Barolo. Um, mm. They cater amazingly mm. with gluten-free pastas that I usually have or their salads. They do a lot of goat cheese and sheep cheese options. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Chef Daryl. He does an incredible job, and Ryan Flutter, the owner. It's just really good Italian. I love that they're seasonal. Um, Bardo, which you guys are in, is one of my absolute favorites. You can't favorites. have the spicy clam pizza anymore. Their cheap cheese changed. Uh, they can't get the cheap cheese. I think I did hear that. Yes. Yeah, they can't get. Uh, you probably on one of the I shows. I'm yes. telling. Yeah. I'm so bummed. It was one of my favorite pizzas ever. They were bummed about it. It's like their, I guess their supplier. They couldn't get it anymore. They had to replace it with a cow cheese. Uh, it was. It's like. Heartbreaking. But you can't do clams now, anyway. I right? can, anyways, but. That's right. Their, their food it was phenomenal. good. Yeah, Bardo's amazing. Yeah, there's other good stuff there. Um, other than Aloy the Thai at downtown on 22nd and Larimer is there. amazing. Oh, it's, they're, they're great. Um, but there's so many neat places. Postino, obviously, Wine Bar on mm -hmm. Broadway. I think it's Broadway and 2nd or Broadway and 3rd. Um, those are a few, but I, I could go on and on and on because I'm local. I'm from here. I'm a native, and I love the food scene here. And we have so many amazing chefs that we work with and we get the opportunity to be a part of. If you want a really fun place to go, go to Max's Gill and Grill and get the Becky's Berry Mojito as Where well. Where is that? It's in Wash Park. Oh, yep, have you on been Gaylord. there? No. no. I'm sorry. I'm just, you're allowed to speak with your mouth well, full on this show. Well, here we're in a kitchen. We have yeah, to. Yeah, we're allowed to. Um, somebody should really make a directory. And funny I say that because that was the original reason I started a gluten-free company in 2012 is I was writing a book, Where to Eat in Colorado Gluten-Free mm -hmm. and How to Eat Safely, and that didn't work out, got divorced, things like that. And so we took that corporation that had been established and, and turned it into this business with the Gluten-Free Explorer is what it was called. Yep. But since that time, was it now seven years now, nobody has really made the definitive how, how to eat in Denver gluten-free well, or dairy-free. Well, I think free. we should take that on. Well, I think you should because I'm pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe we should because it, 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 it needs to be done because, I mean, people, I think it would be really benefit so many people, especially as many tourists as we get to yeah. Denver. You know, it's like go to a website and you find out all, all the places you can some, or can't And there's some, but they're go. a little clunky. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it would be good to start collaborating on even just a, a, the top places to go and the top dishes to have. Right. And also the restaurants that are compliant and modify 
without with ease and are happy to do it. And then what they do thing. about cross contamination? Yeah. How how careful are they? How experienced are the um, the servers and things like that? And when I was doing the book in 2012, it was a whole totally different restaurant climate. Nobody really even wanted to talk about right. that. Now it's different. Now it's it's a point of pride. It's like yes, the gluten free can come here. They can eat safely. And so the menu okay, I may have when to, you click on it. Yeah. It's like I may have to revisit this idea. Rich, we may have to. Do we have some other volunteers that may want to do this with us? You actually really do need volunteers. I think we, yeah. could, we could do this as, as, as a public service kind of thing, I not agree. a not-for-profit. Yeah. And whoever wants to go out there and review restaurants, you know, we set up a criteria. You go meet with the chef. And, yeah, we might have to do this. I think we'll have to take this offline and uh, yes, see definitely. what we deal with it. Yes, definitely. Uh, that'd be that'd be amazing so well rebecca thank you so much for being Thanks here for this was a, a delicious show Super thank fun. you for having an oyster <laughs> allergy because we made this most amazing italian uh, sandwich pizza which i am in love with because it has mayo on it that's my favorite well food, yeah so. and thank you for letting me educate too on some of the allergen stuff as well alongside oh the definitely pizza. thank and you we appreciated that pizza, so thank you yep and then your pizza is going to be on the website and i will definitely put in there that you can switch out the oyster sauce with the hoisin sauce and it'll make just as good uh, i'll make it at home and send you a picture Sure. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for checking out this episode of Victoria's Gluten-Free GastroGab. Be sure to visit our website at victoriasglutenfreekitchen.com for recipes from today's show and to check out previous episodes. You can also find links to our partner pages or find a retailer or restaurant near you that serves Victoria's Gluten-Free Kitchen products. Thanks for your continued support.